Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just welcome Kevin again. I, I, I mentioned to everybody, you know, as we were waiting, just that, that you know, I I I thought our you know, the discussion we had was was, was great, you know, the, the last month, and and you know, it was it was so good that I I didn't realize that we ran out of time <laughs> before we got to see, you know, kind of I guess to speak. I know we spoke a lot about the theory and methodology, the science behind scanning and, and game awareness, and, and and a lot of the way that you you know that you teach it in, in your book and everything, but we didn't really talk a lot about how to train for it, how to develop it. And, uh -huh. and I think it's, you know, that was sort of the impetus for, for, for bringing you back. And, and, you know, I guess maybe while you get things loaded, if you want to get, get the conversation yeah. started there. Oh, okay. In fact, um, <laughs> Richard, I think my other laptop, other laptop is working now. So I prefer to go now. All right, good. I feel like I'm in the matrix right now. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Right, let me let me get on here. There we go. Get that laptop out of the way. Get this one back in here, and uh, hopefully, um, hopefully, no more issues. Apologies, I'm just plugging something else. And um, yeah, I'm just starting up my presentation, so that will be much better. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we're all good. We can hear you. See you. Yeah, all good. All right. No, I'm not hearing you. Hold on. Oh, no. Okay. All right. This is. Can you hear me? Yeah? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Yep. All sorted. Right. right. I'm just waiting on this uh, presentation starting up and we'll get on that. Yes. Yeah, so. Apologies about that, everybody. Um, we'll, um, uh, yeah, we, we ran out of time last time. Uh, I waffled on a bit too much, and obviously this uh, delay is eating into our time here, but happy to stay on for as long as you need. So last time we managed to cover, um, or we talked about, uh, the, as you mentioned, the science, the theory behind things, and we're just going to go through some easy, practical applications uh, how we could do things in our sessions here so i'm able to share my screen okay uh, you'll need to allow me to do that richard Let's do that. should be good now okay great uh share and we're in the presentation okay yep looks good yeah Right, great. Um, so, uh, part two of the practical sessions. Um, I think everybody, hopefully everybody that, that, that's on and, and watching uh, saw the theory thing last time, but just we're going to talk about scanning, how to train it and develop game awareness and look at the practical application within sessions. Um, as, as I said before, same slide as I had last time because this guy is a god to me. Uh, he's always, you know, he's, he was like a bird on a wire. He was always checking, always looking about him. Uh, very important. And he had a hugely successful career, uh, unsurprisingly. So we, we talked about a little bit about the decision-making process last time. I'm not going to go into that again, but we'll have a look at this where we say that the major problem is for the vast majority of players is they focus on the ball and then they control the ball. And then they start looking around the playing area to see what their decision could be um, before they carry out their game action. And that's far too slow. Um, so what we're going to look at is how can we impact on this look, the scanning aspect, the searching of the playing area, um, having a look around yourself. And how can we put that to the front so that leads this whole process? OK, and... Um, Obviously, people are still, players are still going to need to look at the ball, but they should be looking at the ball. They should be looking where our teammates, where our opponents, where's the space, etc., which will inform their decision making. But they've got to look around, and it can't be just once they receive the ball. So this has to lead the whole process. So what we're going to look at today is just simple constraints that we could add into sessions to, <coughs> to force that habit or force the players to develop that habit. Uh, show this video again of Frank Lampard. I think we counted about 18, was it, or? Uh, 
And again, you just see uh, how often he looks around himself when he's, uh, he's playing, you know, and he had, a, again, a really top career. Um, I mentioned this last time, this, this little cycle, but again, active scan A, you know, A, first letter of the alphabet, works in English with this, but A to F, the cycle starts with A, or the A leads the cycle and, and informs everything else. So active scanning, players have got to be doing that. Uh, just to, to, again, link into this, and the view at the bottom there, you know, anybody that's logged in, please go, go into YouTube and look up Football Network World and look for the learning from the game, from game, from the game to design drills that develop scanning skills. And Gilles Jordet, who we talk about frequently, and this is the info I'm going to give now is from his study. He he participated in that that one. So he's got some great information there. So people log on, have a look at that. But basically what he found in his study uh, a way back that he published in 2013 was that there was a difference between the frequency that players in the English Premier League scanned. So this was midfielders, and he found that um, the more you scanned, the more successful passes that you had. So those that scanned a lot, high-frequency players, completed 77% of forward passes, and the low-frequency players only completed 39% of the forward passes. And these were players playing in the English Premier League. So top, top players, but is this something that we could help them add to their game and maybe those at 39% can get closer to that 77%, okay? Again, good by all means, go away and look at the research papers and find the exact details of that. And Gear does a, again, if you go into YouTube and put Gear's name in and look up the MIT Sloan Sport Conference, uh, you'll see a great presentation that he does there and that was back in 2013. Uh, we'll just quickly look at the, the key moments for active scanning, you know, the key times, I'm not saying this is the, these are the only times, but you'll find this covers the vast majority of the times players might need to do it in the game. Um, as the ball is travelling when receiving a pass, so um, as late as possible, as early as needed. So can you still scan, have one last scan, have a little look away, even as the ball is coming towards you? As the ball is travelling after passing the ball. So as the ball is moving away from you as you pass, can you lift your eyes in another area, the plane area, to see what is going on? You don't just need to follow the ball. Um, as the ball is travelling between two players, so as the player is going somewhere else and the ball is getting transferred from one player to another, whether that's teammates or opponents, as that ball is moving, can you have a little look away somewhere else in the plane area to inform you of what your decision, next decision-making process might be? In between touches, when a player is moving with the ball, now this is, you know, they could be moving slowly and taking a touch, a bit of time, a touch, and then you've got time to look. Or they might be exploiting space quickly, and again, there's usually an extended period between the touches, so they're running with the ball as opposed to dribbling. Again, in between those touches, there's an opportunity to have a little look away to see what else is going on around you. Um, when they're dribbling for you know, close control or to beat an opponent, the frequency of the touches in there, it's going to be difficult for you to look every time between touches. So um, we're on about as a player is moving slowly with the ball or there's time in between the touches. And then the last one that's a bit more advanced, so people don't need to take this as read here to a certain degree, but as the player is taking a controlling touch, now you need to know your teammates and you need to know how they play and you need to be able to read that it's a controlling touch and not of course time pass. So that's a bit more advanced, but there's an opportunity there. If you know that they're going to take a controlling touch and then a second touch to pass the ball, then there's an opportunity there for, for an extra look if you need it. Kevin, can I can I stop you? If you just go back to that slide quickly, that, that it's occurring to me that uh, perhaps it, it's, it's almost like players will need to be scanning almost all the time in a game because it's a, it's, it's, it, if you think of all of these moments together, there's almost yep. not, a, not, a, <laughs> not a moment that not, isn't not, covered. Not, not, not a lot of dead time in here. <laughs> I've, right? covered, yeah. I've covered all my bases here. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so. yeah uh, as, as much scan as you possibly can when you're off the ball. So you, because that's going to inform you, even with the simple things, uh, do you move uh, when you're off the ball and the play is far away and you're not likely to become directly involved in the ball with, for some time, but even that scanning away tells you, right, I, I maybe need to move a yard or two further in that direction or push up there or drop off here or slide across here. So, or make a run here to go and support. So, 
Thank you for watching this short preview video from the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. To see the full video, plus have access to hundreds of other coaching videos, blogs, webinars, and podcasts, plus free and discounted coach education courses and other soccer merchandise, plus to have exclusive access to register for all future NSCAC conventions, both live and online, Click on the link below to become a member of the NSCAC today. Also, please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as your continued support allows us to continue to provide coach education and coach development resources to soccer coaches across Canada and worldwide. Thank you again for your continued support and we look forward to seeing you at future NSCAC events.